In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, this afternoon we had occasion to remember how Our Lady, by the Fathers of the Second Vatican Council, was said to be our Mother in the Order of Grace. These words, the Council, directed to every human being on the face of the earth. Our Lady is our Mother in the Order of Grace. She is that especially to those who have received the gift of grace, in particular sanctifying grace, which gives a kind of participation in Christ. But we can say that she is at least potentially the mother in the order of grace of all those who are called to receive this grace, of all the elect. The invitation to grace is extended to all, but God knows that not all will cooperate with this. Not all will wish to say yes. Remember the parable which our Lord Jesus tells somewhere in the Gospel about how a wedding feast was prepared and ready and the Lord of the feast sent out his servants to the highways and byways to call people to come and participate in this marriage. And many said no. And he was very angry with them and destroyed their cities. By this we're given to understand that there is a difference between objective redemption and subjective redemption. It is the same thing that underlies the thing about many and all in the Eucharistic prayer. Recently the Holy Father spoke on this again to clear up any doubts. Yes, Christ died on the cross for the salvation of all, but only the many will actually be saved, will actually receive the grace which he wants them to receive, and so will come to glory. That is, dying a holy death, they will eventually at least go to heaven. I mean, after possibly a period of time in purgatory. So it is also with our Blessed Lady. She is potentially the mother of everyone. But in a full sense of the word, she is the mother of those who will say yes, or have said yes, even better, to the invitation to grace in this life and implicitly to glory in the life to come. So Our Lady is very interested in us saying yes. We talked about the importance of accepting her into our hearts, or, which is almost the same thing, of allowing her to make us hers. This is the essence of consecration to Mary, a powerhouse of grace. We can almost say a pledge of future glory. We can say that Mary is, in a full and beautiful sense of the word, the mother of those who cooperate with her, the mother of those who strive every day to make themselves docile to her inspirations and guidance. This involves the constant practice of a certain amount of mortification, for no one can be docile who is still under the dominion of their own passions, who is not yet master of their own passions. So the person dominated, for example, by the passion of anger, the least thing that happens makes them fly off into a rage, this person is not free to belong to Mary, because he or she still belongs to his or her anger. And no one can serve two masters. So it is with every passion, and every vice. Passions, of course, are not necessarily bad, but they are bad when they lead us to do sinful things, when we allow them to lead us to sin. So, dear brothers and sisters, we have our work cut out for us. Now, one of the things which is helpful in order to actually accomplish this work is to implore grace from God. We can ask our Lord to help us to live our Christian life in full. 
In fact, we do this all the time. So also we can ask Jesus to help us to live consecration to Mary in full. Now I think that one of the principal places in which we do this is the public worship of the church, that is the liturgy. Also in the liturgy, we give God the honour and the glory which is his due. Mary is par excellence, a kind of liturgical place. In the Catechism of the Catholic Church, we read about how the Eucharist is called, sometimes, the Divine Mysteries. The Divine Mysteries. This makes sense if we understand that the Eucharist is Jesus and that in a special way it is also the memorial of the Paschal Mystery, his saving passion, death and resurrection. But Mary is Jesus' mother. And she is also someone who, according to the Fathers of the Second Vatican Council, cooperated with Jesus in a singular way in offering the sacrifice which brought about our redemption. Mary cooperated, they say, in a singular way in the work of redemption. St. Lawrence of Brindisi, Doctor of the Church, says that she offered Jesus on Calvary, as well as herself. This is a unique role that pertains to Mary as our Lord's special associate in the work of redemption. There's nothing wrong with the word co-redemptrix, so long as we understand it correctly as a title given to someone who is subordinate to and dependent upon our Lord, and whose activity, which is not absolutely necessary, is directed towards the greater glory of Christ, her Son. So in order to obtain the help that we need to live our life as Christians and our consecration to Mary in full, and in order to pay to God the honour which is his due and to not fail in this important duty, we must offer to God an acceptable and pleasing sacrifice. And this is precisely what we do in the liturgy. Now I think that we can understand the words which our Lord speaks, which the evangelist speaks in the Gospel today, in this context. The eleven disciples set out for Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had arranged to meet them. When they saw him, they fell down before him. The mountain where Jesus had arranged to meet them is a symbol of the Blessed Virgin Mary, for he always dwells in her. And it is always through her that we encounter him, for certainly she is the mediatrix of all grace. That is, because of her spiritual maternity and her universal queenship, it is now through her, not by any absolute necessity, but by the free choice of God, that grace is distributed throughout the church. Even the Holy Father, well, even the Holy Father, excuse me, the Holy Father said something very similar to this recently when, shortly after coming to the throne of St. Peter in Rome, he said that the Petrine ministry in the church is dependent upon, is of a less fundamental nature than that Marian, meaning that even grace is distributed through his ministry come from the Blessed Virgin Mary. So, dear brothers and sisters, we need to go to Mary also to offer to the Holy Trinity the praise, honour, adoration and the sacrifice which is his due, which is right and fitting, as we will pray shortly in the Eucharistic prayer, or just beforehand in the dialogue, before the Eucharistic prayer. This is a serious duty that we have. From this we can understand that well, Mary, first of all, is extremely interested in our participation in the liturgy and that we must strive every day to participate in the liturgy of the Church more and more perfectly. And as I say, I think this is to be done through Mary. For she is that place in which Christ is, in which grace is, 
and in a certain sense in which the sacrifice is offered. What I mean is this, we must strive to unite ourselves with her, not just in the celebration of the Mass, but also in our daily lives, with the help that comes to us from her, by acting in union with her heart, we offer to God the sacrifice of the Mass through the priest, and we offer to God the sacrifice of ourself, of all that we do. This is the worship in spirit and in truth that the Father now desires. It is centred on the Eucharist, but not limited, shall we say, strictly speaking, like in terms of our experience of time and events, to the Mass. We can say that in a certain sense we need to live the Mass all the time. When we offer to God our life of devotion, our prayers, our good works, our constant striving to overcome ourselves and to be freer and freer and freer to serve Our Lady by being more and more perfectly hers in actual fact, then we are offering to God a sacrifice that is holy and acceptable to Him in union with the sacrifice of Christ, in union with Him and His sacrifice, because of course we say that grace comes to us from Mary, but Jesus is the author of grace. It's true that she mediates it, she brings it to us, but it is from Christ's sacrifice, we say he is the principal protagonist, that all grace comes into the world. So dear brothers and sisters, let us draw near to this holy mountain of God, which is the Blessed Virgin Mary, for she will help us to know the Holy Trinity and to love him and honour him as we ought and to offer him our whole self. And in this worship and in this offering and in this life of holiness, we fit ourselves to receive the greatest gift that we can ever receive, which is he himself. For God desires with an incredible, incomprehensible desire to unite himself to each and every one of us in the perfect union and happiness of heaven. Let us ask Our Lady to help us to live our life in such a way that we might really receive that grace, that gift, from God when we die and go to heaven precisely. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.